Oh my god, another great fish! Oh my god, I think this is the fish, biggest one he's cutting across. Oh, look at this fish! Look at this fish! Another big large mouth in the middle lake. Wide Open Sportsman on YouTube. I'm your host, Dave Valtiera. Hunting, fishing, and adventure. It's go time. Thanks for joining us. On today's episode, we head to the Texas Hill Country to fish the Myrtle Valley Ranch. It's a beautiful day, and we're ready to get some rod bending action. This place is very special. They've got some amazing exotics like these black buck antelope and these really cool buffalo. But they've also got some monster white-tailed deer. The Texas Hill Country takes me back to my younger days. It's basically where I grew up. Thanks for joining us today on this episode of Wide Open Outdoor Adventures. I'm Dave Valtiera. Today we're going to bass fish Texas Hill Country Lakes. You're in the right place. Don't change that dial. There are two lakes to fish here on the ranch, and they're both spring-fed. That means the water's very clear, and these lakes have a lot of fish. This is a little buzz bait. It's got a little propeller on the back. When I reel it fast enough, the little propeller spins, and it agitates the water. So it's a topwater plug, it's a buzz bait because it's got the little propeller on there, it's got a couple treble hooks hanging down. Tell you what, the bite is on. I love these little back pockets where the water kind of gets protected. These fish can stage in here and work their natural prey. We'll see if this buzz bait will do any good. What I've found is these fish won't come up when it's deep. They'll come up by the shore, but they're, they're really not gonna mess with it in the deep. So, oh, right there when it landed, fish on. There we go, right when it landed. Couldn't say no to that top water. That buzz bait just drew him in. In fact, right when it landed, boom, he took it. Healthy fish. I'm gonna let him go back to fight another day. All right, buddy. Fish on. Large mouth. I was actually foul hooked. And he still took it. Look at him right there. That water's beautiful. Better fish. Better fish. All right. Look at this guy. This is fun. We have had all kinds of surface assaults on this fish right here. I was actually foul hooked. I was going to reel in a little faster, but he liked that wobble in the bait. <laughs> Go figure. You never know what's it's going to take to get that bite. Too cool. Large mouth. That fish that I just caught was about 10 feet from the shore. It's important to kind of try to remember where you caught the fish in its proximity to the shoreline and what water depth and how were you working the lure and then start to dial it in and you'll catch more and more and more fish throughout the day because you start to figure them out. Every day they're a little different. Oh, good fish. And he came out, see, I'm in about 20 foot of water. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. All right. Look how healthy this bass is. Look at the color, the iridescent greens. 
the grays, the blacks, and the silvers, and the whites. That is a beautiful, healthy bass. Do you fish Corpus Christi? Click subscribe. We'll make you a better angler. Rod bend in action, coming your way. I got a couple bites here. I'm gonna move down. All right. We're using a crankbait now. Wide open outdoors. Got a little buck bass here. Use my pliers to get the hooks out. I'll tell you what, there's a ton of different kind of baits you can use when you're bass fishing. I mean a ton of different kinds of baits. And that's what makes it fun. You just keep changing it up. You find what works. He didn't know which way up was. <laughs> I'm using this huge, huge bait. Let's see what the size of this fish is. I tell you, bass will eat something half of its size. I tell you what, bass will eat bait, in theory, up to half its size. And here's a good example. Look at this buzz bait. This is actually an offshore bait with little propellers on the front and the back. And this largemouth black bass, not a huge one. He just said, I want that. That looks good. I tell you. There we go. I'm going to do it real slow this time. Gah! <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> You see, you just got to change up the retrieve speed and the crank rate. Make them come get it. See, I feel I'm too deep right here, but sometimes a cast that's a little off will be the one that teaches you something. Brad, get a shot of those turkey on the hill over there. We're in South Texas, baby. came down for a drink, didn't expect to see me. Fish on. I lobbed it right into that boat dock. He's hiding the shade. He saw that dinner just came his way. Uh, look at him in the water. That's what largemouth do. They go airborne. He found the hooks on that one. All right. Let's bring him in. Another largemouth. He couldn't say no to this lure. He was hanging under that dock, having a nice little time in the shade, and then this lure popped in front of him. Ambush predators. Ambush. Awesome. We're having a great time. South Texas hill country bass fishing. Don't go anywhere. All right, we're in the hill country in August. It's hot, but the bass are taking this top water lure. Thanks for staying with us. Let's get back to the action. Well, we're trying some different baits here today. This is a uni knot, like a little hangman's knot. Great for braided line. And you know, we just, uh, we just gotta keep changing it up to try to find out what these fish want and fish find out where they are. People think we're fishing, we're really hunting. Well, I can tell you that when you're hunting for bass, the fish are going to tend to position themselves in shady areas, under vegetation, under tree limbs, under ledges, 
we're really looking for areas that provide cover for bass prey. Green leaves on newly flooded vegetation provide good cover and attract many of largemouth's natural prey. Some people try to figure out where the big fish going to be. First, find the little fish. Big fish will be there too. Come on, fish. Yeah, he's still there. Fish on. Like that lure. Beautiful, healthy, largemouth bass in the hill country near Bandera. You think this bass wanted that worm? I would say definitively yes. We've got the back side of this lake has got an inlet area where the actual spring brings water into the lake. And over the years, that's also where flood water comes. So there's a cut, a deeper section. So I'm putting this Texas rig in that cut and working it back toward the boat. We'll see how it goes. Another bass. Another bass in the hill country. Staying down, caught him in that cut. Another largemouth, but not a big largemouth. But he liked that Texas rig. All right, let's find some bigger fish. That's the plan. Oh yeah. Stay him down. I haven't even seen him yet. There he is. Oh, nice jump. Staying down again. Good fish. Get that mouth. That's what we came for. That's a good bass. There we go. Staying down. Look at that clear water. Is that awesome? Get him right there. Look at that water. Unreal. Clear water. Look at that water. Unreal. Clear water. And he took that hook, took that bait down. Look at that Yamamoto in his mouth. That's what I'm talking about. Nice large mouth right here. Awesome, beautiful fish. Look at that, that guy could eat a huge frog. Large mouth, wide open style. Mm. And he's staying down. I love these Yamamoto's coming to me. Mm. Another fish, large mouth. to our channel.
You'll know when the next video is published. You'll be notified of tricks and techniques like these. Subscribe today. There he is. Fish on. And we switched over here to this lake because we felt the fish would be bigger. The main reason we felt that is that there was a serious flood um, a year ago and we haven't been catching as big a fish in the big lake. They could have come down the spillway to this lake. So this is not what we came for, but we're going to find bigger fish. We're now working the John boat. Better fish. Coming up. Now that was a thump. And I see another fish with him. Awesome. Up and in. Okay. Good fish. Large mouth. Working for him today on wide open outdoor adventures. This fish throwing water on my sunglasses, but I tell you what, good fish. Last couple fish have been under this algal mat, so I cast basically right to the algal mat and let it drop down right in front of it. And there's the thump. Better fish. Awesome. Staying down. I got him under that algal mat. He has not come up. Big, big, big fish. Here he comes. Nice. That's what we came for. Got him right underneath that algal mat. Look at this fish. Sweet. That's what we came to the hill country for. Look at the head on that son of a gun. Wow. Guess what, guys? This is what we came for. Look at that bass. Hill country bass. We caught a lot of small fish, some medium fish. This guy came out to play. Too cool. Let me get the hook out and show them to you. Now there's an awesome largemouth bass. I estimate he's about four and a half, five pounds. Good fish right here in the middle lake. We knew that we figured that these bigger fish kind of came into the middle lake because we had a big flood. And guess what? That's where we're catching the biggest fish on today's wide open outdoors. Look at that mouth. <laughs> Large mouth. I'm gonna get this big fish back in the water. The whole thing now involves landing this bait, the Yokomoto, on the algal mat and then drop it in or cast it right up to the algal mat. They're waiting under there. These fish are staged in the shade. We've got them patterned. Oh God, another great fish. Oh my gosh. I think this is the biggest one he's cutting across the water. This is it. This is the lake record. You never know, he's coming up. Oh, it's a good fish. Look at this fish. Look at this fish. Another toad. Look at this. Awesome. Awesome. Woo. <laughs> Another big large mouth in the middle lake. We have them figured out.